Welcome to the Coffee Hour with Pastor Angie. People can have a tendency to get into fear. This broadcast is brought to you by Freedom Community Outreach. Jesus himself actually said that in the end times, in Luke 21, 26, he said people are going to faint from fear because of all of the dreadful things that are coming on the world. If your skin could talk, would you listen? Stop tanning and protect your skin from melanoma, the second most common cancer in young women 15 to 29 years old. Learn more at SpotSkinCancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Jim Collins, the author, The Secret to Abundant Living and Beyond Positive Thinking. Jim, we're so blessed to have you today. Thank you so much for joining our coffee hour. Well, thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to sharing. Good. Look for Jim's books on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com, wherever books are sold. So he also has a, a site that we're going to link on our Facebook site. That's Freedom Community Outreach on Facebook. Um, that's where you can also inbox your prayer request as well. That num- um, and also you can join us every week at 5 o'clock a.m. Our prayer, prayer team, a nationwide, worldwide prayer team, is there, uh, 408-418-5050. The passcode to get in is 813-420-3593 and hit pound. We're praying every day, every weekday from 5 a.m. on. So join us. Now, Pastor Jim is the founder of Beyond Positive Thinking Ministries. In his, in his books, Pastor Jim explains how God's work can help you create the life you were designed to live by tapping into your God-given abilities. He emphasizes life application of the truths in Scripture. The Scripture, he says, helps us to reach our full potential. His new book is The Secret to Abundant Living. Oh, boy. Um, both books are, tells us how these scriptural principles help readers to achieve freedom from fear, anxiety, and negative feelings and my god have we not tapped in everything in this society today everyone's wandering around in fear so much anxiety government shutdown and layoffs and things like that people are filled with anxiety and just we people don't know where to turn so we thank god for you so um i'm just going to go ahead um pastor jim tell us a little bit about your book that that's out there now we have our beyond positive thinking book and also our secret to abundant living book and you know, you make such an important point when you talk about everything that's going on in the world today. And sometimes what happens is people can have a tendency to get into fear. And that's that's the challenge because people sometimes, they don't know what to do. They're not sure uh, where to go. They're not sure where to find the answers. And Jesus himself actually said that in the end times, in Luke 21, 26, he said people are going to faint from fear because of all of the dreadful things that are coming on the world. Absolutely. People are really looking for answers, and that's what we try to provide in our, in our books, is kingdom answers and biblical solutions to the world's problems. Pastor Jim, I'm just going to jump in real quick because you said something very powerful there. Now, the word fear, um, a lot of us, we don't think that we're fearful. And a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, this is what's going to happen. But underline all those words and facial expressions, the way we think we feel. Can you define fear? What does fear look like to most people from your experience? I I think fear is manifested most in worry and anxiety. I think I think a lot of people today, it, there's a, I don't know if you've found this, but I sense when I'm just walking around that there's something in the atmosphere that is demonic. Now, I don't want to start this interview yeah. on a negative note, but with everything that's been going on, and I, I, I don't want to go down the political road, but with everything that's going on politically, <laughs> yes. you know, it seems like there's a demonic force trying to divide people. Amen. And that creates so much stress in people that they default to fear, doubt, anxiety, and unbelief. 
And we have to really encourage people to discern the difference between what the enemy's trying to get us to think and what the Bible, God's word, is trying to get us to think. Amen. I always tell people, I said, I say, relax a little bit. Remember, the kingdom of the world and everything that it has is coming to an end. But there is a kingdom. It's the kingdom of God that's going to last forever. And I say, what I would do if I were you is I would focus less on the man-made government here in the United States. Amen. And I would focus more on the eternal government of the kingdom of God with the king, Jesus, as the head of that government. Because that's where you're going to spend a lot more time. You're going to spend the rest of your eternity living in the kingdom of God under a different government. Why not start living that way today? My family and I finally found a perfect apartment to rent. My school is right down the block. Can we go to the park anytime we want? Yes, sweetie. Then, after we were turned down, how was I going to explain? The landlord doesn't want families with kids in his building? So we made a call to HUD and found out that's illegal. If you think you've been discriminated against, call HUD at 1-800-669-9777 or go to hud.gov slash fair housing. Fair housing is your right. Use it. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. The Coffee Hour with Pastor Angie every first Saturday morning from 8 to 9 on WWPR 1490. One in five children in America struggle with hunger. I'm Viola Davis. I was one of those children. I was one of the nearly 17 million kids who worry where their next meal will come from. Join me with the Safeway Foundation and the Entertainment Industry Foundation to help us end childhood hunger. Help undo hunger for America's children. Go to hungeris.org to learn more. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was... Living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone who... Had to be independent and take initiative. And that's how I handle every project I get. Discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. Brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. This is Meryl Streep. Over the years, I have played some characters you could call controlling. But the truth is, there's so much in life we can't control. But here's something we can colorectal cancer. It affects men and women, and it's the second leading cancer killer in the U.S., which is astounding, considering it's almost entirely preventable. Here's how. Most colon cancers start as polyps, and screening helps find polyps so they can be removed before they even turn into cancer. Screening also finds this cancer early, when treatment works best. For me, the screening was simple and quick. It was no big deal, except for the huge sense of relief you feel afterwards. There are several tests that you can choose from. If you're 50 or older, you should talk to your doctor. Decide which one's right for you. Take control. Do everything you can to prevent colon cancer. Screening saves lives. It could really save your life. For more information, call 1-800-CDC-INFO. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. If your skin could talk, would you listen? Stop tanning and protect your skin from melanoma, the second most common cancer in young women 15 to 29 years old. Learn more at SpotSkinCancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. The Coffee Hour with Pastor Angie is brought to you as a community service. What does a waterfall have to do with a... How do mountains relate to... How is a... Anything like... What's the similarity between... And... The answer is, they are all parks. Because the National Park Service isn't just about unspoiled nature. It's also about history, recreation, remembrance, and so many other things. Find out what a park can be to you at findyourpark.com. Thank you. 
you're just joining us, you're listening to our uh, Pastor Jim, and we're talking about his book, The Secret to Abundant Living. And, um, you know, the end times, there is an end time. A lot of people don't believe that. They just think that once life is gone, it's gone. They don't believe that this is there's a time where God's coming back for his people, that Jesus is coming back. He said, when I leave, I'm preparing a place for you. And a lot of people don't go to Scripture. They just go from what they've been taught generations to generations. And a lot of it, and you're absolutely right, Pastor Jim, that demonic, that demonic uh, spirit that's out there, it just jumps on the person to person, and people stop li- um, stop listening to what they've been taught, and they go, go with the consensus. So thank you for opening that up. So what has a more powerful impact on how we proceed in life, a positive thought or a negative uh, thought? In my book, Beyond Positive Thinking, a lot of people look at the cover of that book and then they see the the word beyond and then they see the words positive thinking and they, oh, the power of positive thinking. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) This book is not just another positive thinking book, and that's why it's called Beyond Positive Thinking. Now, let's address what you just mentioned, positive thoughts versus negative thoughts. Okay, here's the difference between positive thinking and beyond positive thinking, and this this is going to help everyone listening. Positive thinking says, if I can just hold enough positive thoughts in my mind for a long enough period of, period of time, something good will happen in my life. Something good will show up in my life. Now, the problem with that is, if you're going to do everything to produce results in your own power, in the energy of your own flesh, you also have to sustain those results yourself. And I'm telling you, I've tried it, and I know many people listening have tried <laughs> it, and I'm sure you found just like I have, it just doesn't work. It doesn't it's work. Too, it's too hard, and the stress that comes with it, it with it is overwhelming. Now, that's why positive thinking, certainly positive thinking is better than negative thinking, but positive thinking in and of itself will not work long term. But beyond positive thinking will work long, long term because beyond positive thinking seeks to tap into the force that created the universe. Now, what, what does that mean? Seeking to tap into the force that created the universe. Well, when we connect with God through His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have the help and the power and the wisdom and the strength to produce results apart, or should I say, not solely in our own power in our own effort. And that's what beyond positive thinking is all about, is tapping into the force that created the universe. Now, someone would say, well, why would I want to attempt to tap into the force that created the universe? Here's the answer. So you can access God's ability and experience God's power. And if you if you ask people, would you like to have more success in your life? They would probably say, yes, I would. Well, the way you're going to have more success is you're going to have to access God's ability. The way you're going to have have more success is you're going to have to learn how to experience God's power. So I think everybody listening, you would say, hey, if I could access God's ability and experience God's power on just a more regular basis, I would experience more success in my life. Amen. Here's the beauty of that whole paradigm. Once you experience success, with the help and by the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, once you experience success with God through Jesus Christ, the power of God helps you sustain that success. And listen, you experience what we were just talking about a minute ago. You experience the opposite of everything that's going on in the world. You say, well, I forget what's going on in the world. <laughs> well, fear is going on in the world. Amen. Doubt's going on in the world. Unbelief is going on in the world. Anxiety is going on in the world. Stress is going on, the, going on in the world. When you learn how to tap into the force that created the universe, you now will find yourself experiencing the peace of God. Hiya. Queen of All Knowledge here, reminding you, creeps out there on the internet hack, scam, and trick savvy cyber users every day. But we can fight back. It's as easy as I see three. 
If you're a victim of online crime, don't give up. Visit IC3, the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center. Your tips help the FBI track down cyber criminals around the world. Report your crime to www.ic3.gov today. The Coffee Hour with Pastor Angie is brought to you as a community service. So I'm having this debate with a landlord. I said, no pets. Can't rent you the apartment. My dog is not a pet. Look, I'm legally blind. I need my guide dog. Sorry, those are the rules. Rules that allow for housing discrimination? So I made a call to HUD. Turns out, landlords must make reasonable accommodations for assistance animals. If you think you've been discriminated against, call HUD at 1-800-669-9777 or go to HUD.gov slash fair housing. Fair housing is your right. Use it. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Call our prayer line. Call 408-418-5050. Find us on Freedom Community Outreach Facebook for the code. Hello? Erica, got your sweats on, girl? Today's speed walking day. Oh, I gotta take my mom to the doctor. Erica, your mom is in Georgia. <sighs> Dorothy, <sighs> you're breaking up. <sighs> Did I mention that we'll be slowing down when we pass that basketball court where the fine brothers play? I heard that. I knew you would. Just give me a minute to put on some makeup. <laughs> Sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Even when exercise is the last thing on your mind, don't give in to excuses. Your sisters can provide the motivation and support you need to eat right, get active, and reduce your risk of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. With the power of sisterhood, there's just no excuse not to live a healthier life. For more information, go to everydaychoices.org. Brought to you by the American Cancer Society, the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, the Ad Council, and this station. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Every year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall. And many result in serious injury. The majority of falls happen at home. So take a look around. Replace bulbs and add lighting to help you see obstacles. Remove things that can make you trip. Fix uneven steps and floors. And install handrails in bathrooms and on stairs. Consider balance or strength training exercises, which can help with agility. Get your eyes and hearing checked regularly. Changes in your hearing can affect your balance. To learn more, please talk to your doctor about steps you can take to help prevent a fall. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or MedicareMadeClear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. The Coffee Hour with Pastor well, Angie and Deaconess Rhonda. You experience the opposite of everything that's going on in the world. You say, well, I forget what's going on in the world. <laughs> well, fear is going on in the world. Amen. What's going on in the world? Unbelief is going on in the world. Anxiety is going on in the world. Stress is going on, the, going on in the world. When you learn how to tap into the force that created the universe, you now will find yourself experiencing the peace of God. And when you can experience the peace of God, and I don't want this to sound too positive, but when you experience the peace of God, <laughs> virtually all your problems come to an end. That's Amen. 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 And I know that there are listeners out there. How does that happen? How does, how, you know, how can I uh, tap into this? What would you say? The way, the way we tap into the force that created the universe, and that's just a fancy phrase for get God's help. You know, pray. Connect with God. Communicate with God. That's all we mean by tapping into the force that created the universe. We simply mean don't just try to do life on your own, in your own power. Connect with God. Get his help because he's ready, willing, and able to help. Now, how, how does that happen? How do I tap into the force that created the universe? Very simply. The way you tap into the force that created the universe is you've got to learn how to live by faith, and walk in love yes. according to who you are in Christ. Now, why, why would, why would, what do, what do you mean live by faith, walk in love? What's the big deal about that? Well, here it is. God's frequency is a faith frequency and a love frequency. So, for example, 
we're on the radio right now, and we're tuned into a certain uh, number on yeah. the dial. What what number is it again? Fifteen seventy. Fourteen ninety. Forget what. Okay, so fifteen ninety. Uh, fourteen ninety. Okay, so now let's say we want to listen to this program, and we're going to tune into fourteen ninety. What happens if we tune into fourteen eighty or fifteen hundred? We're going to hear some muffled noise, aren't we? Now, the reason we're going to hear some muffled noise is because we're on the wrong frequency. And that's what what we have to be mindful of is if we want to access God's ability and experience God's power, we have to live on his frequency. And his frequency is a faith frequency, and his frequency is a love frequency. And that's how you tap into the force that cre- created the that created the universe is you learn how to live by faith and walk in love according to who you are in Christ. Amen. That's, you said a lot there, and we're just grateful to hear for you to break that down for us. Now, um, Jesus warns us people will faint from fear because they expect the worst and I you know I, I just know too many people that just go into a stressful mode to where it impacts your health what would you say to that well you make a good you make a good statement you know faith and fear in their most basic definitions they both expect something now faith usually expects the positive fear usually expects the negative. And even when you when you connect it to your health, even the medical profession, they even say that that fear can cause sickness and disease. And they refer to it as psychosomatic illness. So fear, anxiety, worry, discouragement, frustration, all these emotions originate in a person's mind. And that's why they call it psychosomatic. The mind is causing a problem in the body. Okay. So I think that when we make a shift from fear to its opposite, yeah. anxiety to its opposite, depression to its opposite, well, what are the opposites? Well, the opposite of fear is faith. The opposite of anxiety is peace. The opposite of depression is joy. And you can go all the way down the list and just compare and contrast. What are the emotions the world is most lives in? And then what are the opposite of those emotions? Because the opposite of those emotions are probably coming from God. And when we begin to replace these negative, debilitating emotions with more positive, productive emotions, yes. we again are living on God's frequency. And what happens Amen. when we're living on God's frequency? God's power and God's ability show up to help you in your life. And specifically, Amen. as you said, in our physical bodies, God's power and ability show up, and they show up to heal your body. Well, oh, we could we could get on a roll right now, but let me pause and let you talk some more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just you got, I don't know if Deaconess has anything she wants to jump in real quick, but we're just embracing this yeah. because we know, and sometimes people feel feel so. Well, I have this awesome relationship. I've been serving God. I've been faithful to God, and things aren't really happening the way I want. I'm going to keep my faith, and we always say, hold on to that faith because sometimes it's it's not time. God He knows what what we need and where we need it. It's always not in his time and so we have to be faithful and you know and continue to keep our positive thoughts stay in the realm stay in the god realm the spiritual realm because pray more you know just live and live like it's just wonderful because god's world is wonderful so we want christians to hold on to their faith don't lose it because when your world is shifting and shaking around you and you're not getting the results you think you should be getting hold on to god's hand and talk to god because god all this holy spirit already reveals to us what is needed, what you must do. And sometimes we miss that too. So we're just really grateful that you're you're giving this us this because we want our sisters and brothers out there and those just coming to Christ to stand still and let God do, you know, let God work in your life. Stay positive. 
you know, have positive thoughts, pray, meditate, stay in the God realm because we want people to win. God, we have the victory. We're already, when we accepted Christ, we already got the victory. And we want to be in victory mode at all times. We don't want to slack off and let the devil ride us like no tomorrow. We want to stay in the victory lane. If I had to comment on that thought about, you know, you know, I'm walking with God, I'm following God, and, you know, I have these dreams and goals, and it seems like they're just not coming to pass. Well, if a new believer was to say that to me, now, I've been a pastor for a little over 10 years, so, I mean, that's not forever, but wow. it's long <laughs> enough to think that I've heard just about it all, from new believers to mature believers. Now, here, here's the key. The challenge that we have in this world is sometimes we're focusing on the wrong thing. And I'm going to say it this way. The objective in the world is basically worldly success. When people hear the word success in the world, for the most part, I know there can be exceptions, but for the most part, they immediately think of material success, money, finances, material things. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, Jesus spoke more about money and managing material possessions than almost any other thing. So we know that's important. But here's the distinction. The objective in the world is worldly success. The objective in the kingdom of God is faithfulness. So what would I say to someone who might be struggling and saying, I I just don't feel God, or a better way to say it would be, I just don't sense that I'm experiencing as much of God as I would like. I would say this to them, focus on the key to the kingdom of God, faithfulness. And the Apostle Paul said it, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 2, moreover is required in stewards, that's us, we're managers, God owns everything and we're managers as we sojourn through this uh, this life, like you said earlier, we're just passing through. And that's why we have attention sometimes. Because we are, when we get born again and we get connected to heaven, yeah, I want to go now. Wait a minute. Don't rush out on us so fast. I want to go now. That creates attention. Well, as we're, as we're sojourning through, now we're part of a different kingdom. And the key to living successfully in the kingdom of God is faithfulness. So that's what I would encourage someone with who, who maybe is, is saying, mm, it's not working for me, or it's not this, this whole concept of living a victorious Christian life, it, 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 it's just not working as well as I would have hoped. I would say to them, focus on being faithful with your time, talent, and treasure. Just focus on that. Don't get sucked into what the world is trying to is trying to do to you. They're, the only thing the world has to offer is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Don't get sucked into that. That's not God's realm. That's this world's realm. God's realm is faith and love and faithfulness. And when you focus on those things, on, on the things of God, that's when yes. what you need shows up in your life. God's protection shows up in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, starting to preach a little bit now. God's provision shows up in your life. And again, we're back to the, the concept of trying to do it all in your own power. See, that's why Christians get frustrated. I don't know why I can't live this victorious Christian life. I have an idea. You're trying to live it in your own power, and the Christian yes. life is not only difficult to live, it's impossible to live in your own power. You must have the help and the power of the Holy Spirit in order to live a victorious Christian life. And when you do, you're going to find God's protection and provision not only show up in your life, they are sustained in your life by the power of God, and now you're free to live this victorious Amen, life amen. Jesus died to give you. He already secured it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were, just, we were sitting here praising, yeah. And um, you wrote in your book about um, God has provided us with everything. It, it, for, you know, our God-given dreams. God speaks to us in our dreams. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, I feel like there was a time, oh, maybe 
I must say maybe it was 10 years ago with uh, when Rick Warren came out with his Purpose Driven Life book when the whole everybody was focused on purpose. It was purpose, 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 and amen, it still should be purpose because we all need to find out what God's purpose is for us in this life because we're only here for a very short amount of time compared to the time we're going to spend in eternity. So I talk to people about why they were created, and I make this statement. You were created to have fellowship with God through the process of realizing your God-given dream. Now, that's a big statement, but some people, they are asking themselves, oh, well, why am I here? Well, why was I created? Well, you were created in the image and likeness of God to have dominion over the whole earth. In other words, it's your responsibility to do something here on the earth in this life. And the first thing that every single person was created to do is to glorify God. And you say, oh, Jim, where do you get that from? Well, I get both of those statements that I just made from John 17 and verse 4 when Jesus was Amen. talking to his and our Heavenly Father. And, and he said, Father, I've glorified you here on the earth. And I like to say to people, if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. So if Amen. Jesus glorified God as his number one pursuit, I'm going to glorify God as my number one pursuit. Then he said, how did he glorify God? In John 17, 4, he said, I've glorified you by finishing or completing the work that you gave me to do. And part of the work, I believe, that God has given every person to do yes. is includes the realization of their God-given dreams. Now, Amen. notice it's God-given. Okay. We're not just running around saying, gimme, 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 my name's Jimmy, I'll take all you'll gimme. No, we, we have a God-given part of this, of this formula. Now, God-given dream, I like to say it this way. Do you think that God would create everything we can see, everything we can experience in this physical realm, and then deprive us of enjoying it? That's ridiculous. So everything is available. So it, it's not um, it's not ungodly to say, man, I want that. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I'd like to experience that. No, because God created everything for his most prized possession, yes. people, yes. mankind, human beings, to experience during this life on the earth. Because when we get to the other side... It's going to be infinitely better, and I have a feeling that God's going to say, now look at everything you missed out on because I created all this stuff for you when you were down there. You didn't experience it there, but don't worry, you experience it up here. <laughs> so that's, that's what I mean by, that's what I mean by when I use the phrase God-given dream. You were created. Every person was created to glorify God. How? through the process of realizing their God-given dream. And the only way we can do that is to have daily fellowship with God so we can get the plans and the details of how we're supposed to do it. Praise the Lord. That's that's just totally awesome. Now, you, you know, and I hope listeners out there get that part, especially those who are trying to figure their way around how to get Christ in their lives and try to make things work. And Christians who are at work or at home in church who feel as though they should they can do more and they're not a part of a group or a committee. And, um, you, you know, these are good thoughts to have and questions that you can bring to God. And, you know, there's one thing that you wrote, you wrote about, you wrote, you wrote about that God loves us, and God has blessed us and has made provisions for our success in life. Now, I know you just talked about the success piece. Was there anything else you wanted to add to that? Now, as far as as far as far purpose goes, I just want to, I'll just reinforce this. Every human being has a general purpose. And every human being has a specific purpose. And we'll just finish up on that that concept with this. Every single person's general purpose is to glorify God. Every single person's specific purpose is to have fellowship with God. What's that mean? Spend time with them, just like you just said. 
spend time with them, have fellowship with God through the process of yeah. realizing their God-given dream. And I think that if, if a person, any person, believer or unbeliever, any person, if they'll just focus on those two things, I believe the Spirit of God will start to lift them out of their depression and negativity and fearfulness and worry and their anxiety. I don't see how it can happen because God's the author of it all, and he created us to enjoy life in a certain way. And if we just get on his frequency, we're going to experience all the wonderful things that Jesus died to give us. Amen, amen. If you're just listening to the Coffee Hour, um, you're listening to our pastor, Jim Collins. Um, he, the, he's the author of The Secret to Abundant Living, and we're so w- glad to have him. And also he's the author of Beyond Positive Thinking. So you can also look for Jim's books on Amazon and Barn and Noble, uh, wherever books are sold. So we're just so excited to have him and listening to the word. And Jim, you're, you have scriptures, and our, for those believers who are just coming in to, um, you know, start a reading and have Bible plans, things they're reading, do you have any scriptures you'd like to get for anything that you said today? Because the, the last point you made, um, God's plan for us, I believe there's a scripture in Jeremiah 29:11 that um, kind of helps uh, Christians, especially new Christians, coming on board and understanding God's plan for us. Well, absolutely, of course. We, um, you know, many new Christians uh, know Jeremiah 29, 11. I've, I've talked about it in my books as well. And, you know, God has a plan for you. He has a specific plan and purpose for your life. And when you make a decision, that's the key. You have to make a decision to want to connect with God. And sometimes, me too, and I'm a pastor, you know, sometimes they... People look at us pastors and they go, oh, well, I can't relate to he, him or her, and they can't relate to me because uh, they're a person of the cloth and I'm just this little person over here. No, 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 wait a minute. We're all human beings in this life, and we all have the same challenges and problems and heartaches as the next person. But God has a plan. He has a future. He's given you the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And then I think sometimes we we quote Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, but we forget yes. that the key to making Jeremiah twenty nine eleven happen in your life comes in comes in the the next verse. Now let me just um, let me get it here so I can read it. I can read it specifically. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace. Well, we already talked a lot about that. God's will is for the very peace of heaven to show up and manifest in your life, and not of evil. So all of this this divisiveness that the enemy, let's tell it like it is, that the enemy is trying to put in our mind. You say, Jim, what do you mean divisiveness? I mean, I mean it's coming through the news media. I mean it's coming through every other, other channel and It's divisiveness. We're trying to pit men versus women, black versus white, Democrat versus Republican. And you have to discern that that is not the truth. You have to discern that's a lie of the enemy. And someone is trying to divide in order to conquer you. So don't fall into the evil. So it says here, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Wow, that's so powerful. Then verse 13, here's the one. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So here I am, a pastor in the same boat as every other person, who sometimes has one foot in the world, and one foot in the kingdom. <laughs> one foot in the kingdom of the world and one foot in the kingdom of yes. God. Now, you say, oh, man, i got to get a new pastor. Hey, don't kick me out yet. That's um, right. <laughs> here's the thing. In, in <laughs> One of the biggest challenges people have today is the pressure of the world. We're in the world, but not of the world, Jesus intimated. In Amen. 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 Now, yes. with that, we want to embrace 
a biblical worldview. We want to embrace living in the kingdom of God. And, and you know, I wish there was an, I wish I could give you an easy three step formula, but I can't. And the reason that I can't is because it's going to be up to you, my friend who's listening today. It's going to be up to you to make a decision for Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, to make a decision to live your life focused on being in the kingdom of God and to forsake, renounce the kingdom of the world. Be mindful to resist the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And be mindful of that. So we have to make a, a decision. And I think that's sometimes where we don't want to make a decision. Why? Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I pray, oh, God, please bail me out of all my problems. I know I got myself into the process, <laughs> yes. but you know, bail, bail me out of all my problems. Oh, I don't want to take responsibility for my life. Just, God, you just <laughs> yes. do it all for me. No, 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 no. See, that's the problem. Sometimes we're praying for God to do something for us that he's already done through the finished work of yeah. Jesus Christ. You say, ooh, Jim, that's a big theological statement, the finished work of Christ. The finished work of Christ means that everything you need for the rest of your life has already been provided through the death, burial, and resurrection of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why we have to make Jesus Lord. We have to put him first. See, many people have made a, a decision to take Jesus as their Savior. But very few have made a commitment to make Jesus the Lord, to put him first in every single area of their lives. Amen. Come yes. to Jeremiah yes. 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11, the blessing part, works when you put verse 13 into practice. When you seek God, he said, you'll yes. find me if you search me out with all yes. your heart. It's your decision. Yes. You have to make it. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Call our prayer line. Call 408-418-5050. Find us on Freedom Community Outreach Facebook for the code. And today, look for clouds in the morning with a high of 73 degrees with a slight change. Come on, girls. Work it out. No pain, no gain. If you're not groaning, you're not toning. With Gut Peak on, you too can have washboard abs in just seven minutes a week. Hello? Hey, girl. I was just thinking that watching TV burns about one calorie a year. Mm -hmm. So if I walk over to your house and we just play cards... Oh, well, you'd still be ahead of the game. And if we walk to the store for a diet soda... Oh, I am with you, girl. Start stepping. When it comes to staying fit, just watching doesn't work. But with the support and motivation of your sisters, you can work it out. Eat right, get active, and reduce your risk of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. Just watch how your health will improve with the power of sisterhood. For more information, go to everydaychoices.org. Brought to you by the American Cancer Society, the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, the Ad Council, and this station. The Coffee Hour with Pastor Angie is brought to you as a community service. Hi, I'm Viola Davis. Did you know that one in five kids in America struggle with hunger? Growing up, I was one of those kids. But we can solve this. When we make breakfast happen for kids in our neighborhood, we have the power to end childhood hunger, create bigger, brighter school days, and healthier minds and bodies. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice. We're hungry for more. A message from the Albertsons Companies Foundation and the Entertainment Industry Foundation. You can stream us live online anywhere in the world or stream our encore broadcasts on Facebook. Look for Coffee Hour on www.facebook.com slash coffeehour9634. Many people have made a, a decision to take Jesus as their Savior, but very few have made a commitment 
to make Jesus the Lord, to put him first in every single area of their lives. Amen. Come yes. Back to Jeremiah yes. 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11, the blessing part works when you put verse 13 into practice. When you seek God, he said, you'll yes. find me if you search me out with all yes. your heart. It's your decision. Yes. You have to make it. Amen. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Lord, for that. Yeah, because you just open a window so people can see. This is, this is where people, this is where people get stuck at. And, and I think you just released some knowledge into some hearts where they can learn more about God. This is a walkthrough here. So we thank God for that. Um, so I, I'm loving the fact that you have the scriptures for a lot of the, uh, in your book. And, um, so faith is required. Uh, period. So you write about God's realm and the faith realm. So we, we're just so grateful that you broke that. Um, you, you broke into that for us. Now Matthew six and thirty three, um, where you you kind of emphasize. Uh, you, you put it, you put some questions there. So if someone's reading Matthew six and thirty three, how do you seek the kingdom? first in your life. I think you covered a little bit about that. I just want to just make a blanket statement for those listeners out there so they can know how to proceed. Yeah, I'm going to make it very, very focused, very simple. Seek first the kingdom of God. The way you seek first the kingdom of God, or seek the kingdom first, is number one, you make Jesus Lord of your life. Oh, well, uh, how do I do that? That sounds a little too theological for me. No problem. Here's how you do it. Lord means owner. You make a decision to make Jesus the owner of your time, your talent, and your treasure. That's how you do it. You want to seek, Amen. you want to seek the kingdom first? You're going to have to, you're going to have to make the king, yes. Jesus, the Lord of your life. You're going to have to put him first in every area of your life. What are the areas of your life? Your time, talent, and treasure. So here's a sweeping statement. Faithfulness with your time, talent, and treasure are what are going to get you your rewards that Jesus is going to give you at the believer's judgment. And that's the key. Seeking the kingdom of God first means being faithful with your time, talent, and treasure here on the earth during your life. Amen. Amen. And, you know, amen. Now, so you're saying also, uh, you're saying the door to provisions is open to you. How, open that up for a believer. Open that up for someone who's trying to figure that one out. The door of provision is open to you. Now, where, where that kind of concept kind of comes from is, is the same verse in Matthew 6.33 that we're talking about. And Jesus, first of all, in context... What's Jesus talking about? He's talking about, hey, I want to give you a formula here that's going to help you get rid of all your anxiety. That's how we started the program. Fear and anxiety are the two greatest emotions that are challenging people today. Why? Because of the demonic influence in the world. So all the devil has to offer is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And they show up with the emotions, fear and anxiety. So Jesus is saying here in Matthew 6, he comes down and he says, don't worry. And then he says, here's what you should do. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, here's the provision part. And all these things will be added unto you. So, the basic necessities of life, food, clothing, and shelter. And that's important because sometimes we're focusing too much on wants instead of trusting God for all of our needs to be met. So notice it didn't say, and all and all your wants will be provided for you. No, it's your needs. Yes, in yes. Of that scripture, it's it's your basic needs that Jesus is saying, don't worry about. So the key to provision is, of course, number one, put Jesus first through faithfulness with your time, talent, and treasure. That's where the blessing is going to flow. And then his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Here's a, here's a concept that I talk about at great length in my Secret to Abundant Living book. It's the concept of faith righteousness. Seeing yourself right with God because of Jesus. Don't see yourself, don't try to get right with God 
based on following a prescribed set of rules, rituals, and regulations. See, works righteousness says, I'm, I'm going to get right, I'm going to get whole because of what I do or what I refrain from doing. No, that's works righteousness. That's, a re- that's religious activity. Now, the opposite of works righteousness is faith righteousness. Faith righteousness says, I'm right with God because of what Jesus did. So basically, yes. the, way we, the way we sum all that up is, Jesus perform, performed, and I get the reward. See, in the world, it's all about performance. It's, it's what do I got to do to look good, to feel good, to be good, yes. to, you know, to have all these things? That, that's the wrong focus. The focus needs to be on the King, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know you, yes. I know you, some, some of you listening, you've heard that before. Oh, it's yes, just another preacher giving me that religious mumbo jumbo. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Righteousness is so important. Second Corinthians 5.21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Him, I'm telling you, a key, there's a key that will unlock the door of provision yes. for, for you, my friend who's listening. It's to see yourself right with God. God is not out to get you. God is not out to punish you. Jesus already took the punishment. He took the wrath of God in your place. And now, when you believe that in your heart, that's when all the benefits of your salvation start to show up in your life because it says if you confess Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be, you'll be saved, you'll be healed, you'll be delivered. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. That's the key. The key to provision is to seek God's righteousness because of Jesus not trying to do things in your own, own power. Well, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then I know God will pay my rent. Well, maybe, maybe not. Well, I'm going to, you know, I, I know why I got this lower back pain. It's because it's because oh, I'm messing up over here. So let me try and fix up my life over here, and then, oh, God, heal my back. No, remember, God has already done everything he's going to do for you through the finished work of Christ. It all mm-hmm. already belongs to you in Christ. And when you embrace your new identity as the righteousness of God in Christ, listen, all these things show up in your life automatically. That's the key to God's provision. He's already done it Amen. through Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank God for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're listening. We're just listening in. Um, uh, if those driving, I know you can't take notes, but we will have this recording on our Freedom Committee Outreach site. We'll have we'll post it for you and in, in on YouTube. But um, that is a that's beautiful. I, I just want to just finish up, wrap up. Um, Romans ten and seventeen. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. Um, I know there's some out there that probably don't really can't break into that. Can you just you know my last request? Sure. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no problem. Oh, let's do it. Let's let's unpack that that wonderful verse just in in the context of physical healing. I, I did. I preached a sermon oh a while back, and it was called "What to Do If You Get Sick." <laughs> and <laughs> the first thing that I told people was, you have to hear what God says about healing and health. So this is what Romans ten seventeen refers to. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith to receive what Jesus already died to give you, healing and health, comes by hearing what God's word says about healing and health. So what we've done is we've recorded every healing scripture from cover to cover in the Bible into a CD, and I tell people God's word is God's medicine. And so, what's the first thing you want Amen. to do if you get sick? You want to begin to hear what God, what God's Word says about healing and health. You want to start to hear some things like, He Himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. Yes. You want to hear some things, that's Matthew 8 and 17. You want to start to hear some things like First Peter 2.24. 
he, he himself bore my sins on his own body on the tree, that I might, being dead to sin, might live for righteousness. By his stripes, I was healed. You want to hear Amen. something like Acts 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost in power, who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. That says to me, number one, God's will is for you to be healed of everything. Jesus yes. healed all, A-L-L. He healed them all. What did he heal them from? Sickness is satanic oppression. Yes. They were oppressed by the yes. devil. That's why they needed healing. Sickness is satanic oppression. So what did Jesus do 2,000 years ago? He healed them all. Oh, then i got to hear Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it then, he's going to continue to do it today. So Romans 10, 17 simply says, Let's be mindful to put ourselves in a position to hear the word of God concerning the area of our lives where we need it most right now. And amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, Pastor Jim. We're just so excited to have you just kind of fellowship with us today and provide us insight in what we what the prize is because God is all that we need and the word of God is sufficient to take us through this life and we just thank you for breaking that down to us and the book that you have I just we definitely I definitely want to get into a good read in your books because they're so helpful and I have a lot of people looking for help and sometimes these books can kind of answer all their questions and I want to go ahead and let our listeners know how to find your your books The Secret to Abundant Living this is past, uh, Pastor Jim Collins um, Pastor Jim Collins I want to ask one thing I thought I heard a New England accent because I thought you were in Florida <laughs> Well, I I grew up on the South Shore of Boston, wow. and I, back in 1984, I said, you know, I don't really like the cold weather up here, so I am going to pack it up, and I had, a, I had an opportunity here in South Florida, and I said, I'm going to pack it up, so on in March of, two, of 1984, March of 1984, I packed it up, and I've been living here in beautiful South Florida for the past whatever. Beautiful, years. beautiful, beautiful. I know I heard some New England accent. I, I've been in the South so long, I don't know what my accent sounds like, but we just thank God for you today. Sure. If you're just listening or capturing the last part, uh, Pastor Jim Collins, says he's the author of The Secret to Abundant Living and Beyond the Positive thinking look for jim's books at amazon.com and barnesandnoble.com and wherever books are sold and at this time pastor jim let's pray because i know there's a lot of people out there that just need prayer and and and, and provision <laughs> the word of god can we pray for them they they they, they sure do and i just want to as as we go into our prayer time i just want to preface our prayers by saying to my friend who's listening right now yeah. You're not alone. Yeah. You're not alone. You're not alone. And you may say, oh, nobody else has this problem. Nobody else has this challenge. Trust me. Trust me. I've probably been through it in one way, shape, or form. Yes. And many other people have been too. And here's what I want to say as we start to pray. Yes. I want to say, God is no respecter of persons. Yes. And he has solved your problem for somebody else. And that's the only proof you need, my friend, yes, that yes. God will solve the same problem. Amen. For you. Amen. Pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together today. Yes. And Father, what a privilege it is to to know God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, as wonderful, loving Heavenly Father. And Father, just the fact that you that Jesus came and introduced you to us as Father means you care about every single person. So, Father, right now in Jesus' name, I'm praying for that one who's listening right now and saying, you know, I've heard this, but I don't know if it'll work for me. Father, you love that person, and you've already made it work for them because you gave them the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Father, as we pray for that one listening right now, first, we come against the, the intent of the enemy. Every need will be met 
because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. The Coffee Hour with Pastor Angie is brought to you as a community service.